Right, the most amazing pork chop served with fantastic mashed potatoes, braised cabbage, and fabulous caramelized apples. First off, the pork chop. Whenever you cook pork, make sure you take it out of the fridge for at least five minutes before you cook it. It gets up to room temperature, and then it stops the pork from being dry. The most amazing thing about pork is that it needs to be seasoned twice. Once before you cook it, and second as you're cooking it. Nicely season it, salt, pepper, both sides. Mop up the seasoning. This fat here, beautiful. Once that's caramelized, it keeps the pork nice and moist. Let that sit there for five minutes before we cook it. It makes it so much tenderized. Also, it gets up to room temperature. Hot pan, on. Get the pan nice and hot first. A teaspoon of olive oil. Hold the pork by the bone and place it inside. That's the noise you want to hear. 90 seconds each side, lift it up, turn it over. Caramelize both sides, really important. Take the pork and tilt it and let the pan literally do the work. Stand the pork up. That way it cooks the back of the pork, starts to render the fat, and more importantly, the more fat you render, the more flavorsome that pork is. Eight ounce pork chop, normally, they'll take between seven and eight minutes to cook. Once the pork is colored, a couple of knobs of butter, and you baste that pork. And that butter's giving the pork a really nice nut brown flavor now. By basting the pork, you're adding more texture, and more importantly, you're stopping it from going dry. After three minutes, turn it over and do the same to this size. You take it out, you let it rest. Now that's not cooked, but as it rests there, it'll continue cooking. Drain out the pan, teaspoon of oil, some minced garlic, chopped shallots. And this is where we start to make the most amazing sauce. Caramelize the garlic and the shallots. Deglaze the pan. Basically, it's gonna wash the bottom of that pan and give that amazing flavor to your sauce. Once you start to see the color of those shallots and garlic changing, Calvados in. Tilt the pan. Ooh. And singe your eyebrows. Reduce that alcohol. Really important to burn that off. And now look at the color. Once you've reduced the alcohol, from there, you take a touch of chicken stock. Reduce all that Calvados down, and this is where the sauce starts to go up a level. Bring that up to the boil. Cook it out for two minutes, let it reduce. Right, stock's reduced down by half. Next up, cream. That gives it that richness to the sauce. More importantly, it starts to thicken. Bring that up to the boil. And what we're looking for is like a cafe au lait color. Teaspoon Dijon mustard and a teaspoon of grain mustard. And just gently whisk that in. Now look at that, the most amazing, stunning mustard sauce. Lift up the pork, the pork goes back in. That sits there on a low heat for three and a half to four minutes. And that pork just cooks in that sauce, stays nice and tender, and it almost relaxes and cooks at the same time. Right, next up, caramelized apples. Granny Smith apples goes brilliantly well with pork. The flavor and the acidity is incredible. Peel the apple, core the apple, and slice. One, two, three. What we're gonna do now is caramelize these apples, but first off, make a caramel. Hot pan, brown sugar, star anise, cinnamon, and cloves. Lightly season the apples. Salt, pepper, both sides. Once we season them, I'm gonna make the caramel. A tablespoon of brown sugar. The exciting thing about making a caramel is you never stir it. If you stir a caramel, it will start to crystallize. Hot pan, get the caramel melting. Once it starts to change color, we're gonna add the butter, then add our apples. Okay, apples in. After that, star anise, cloves. That starts to make the caramel really nice and fragrant. Pan's nice and hot, get your butter in. Ooh, Mary, they look lovely. Here we go. Mm. Wee. Now, once you've formed that caramel, touch a butter in there and almost let the apples stew. So it's that kind of fragrant, spicy, sort of caramelized apple with the acidity that lifts the flavor of that pork. Coming to plate it. First off, your braised cabbage. And we're gonna sit the pork on top of the cabbage. That just sits there. Next, your cream potatoes. Lift your pork out of that sauce and sit that on. And then just spoon your mustard sauce on top. Lift those caramelized apples and then use that beautiful garnish. Take some of that amazing caramel and just glaze. And there we have the most amazing caramelized pork chop, braised cabbage, cream potatoes, apples, done.